Reporting in progress. This meeting is called to order. Time is 6.02 p.m. It's Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. I'm Sarah, president of the Neighborhood Council, and uh, we're gonna do roll call. Uh, Secretary Sanchez, roll call, please. Sarah Condoning. Present. Uh, Vincent Chente Montalvo. Present. Benny Madera is going to be late. Uh, Richard Ortiz. Present. Melanie Bolongo Shiklet. Here. Nancy Soto. Present. And Fernanda Sanchez is here. We have quorum. We have quorum. Excellent. I forgot to mention this is a meeting of the Planning and Land Use Committee. We have uh, five members and we have open seats for the public. If anybody is interested in being on the Planning and Land Use Committee from the community, please email Secretary Sanchez at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com. All right, so now we're gonna move on to uh, item two, public comment on non-agenda items. If there's anybody from the public on this meeting who has, wants to comment on something that's not on the agenda, you have two minutes to speak please raise your hand or press star nine. And I just want you to know for the items, the public is also given time to speak on that item. So, so please raise your hand or press star nine to speak if you have a public comment, general public comment right now. I don't see any hands up. New, okay. Um, it seems quick. I guess, I, did I skip anything here? We have public comment. We don't have announcements, right? I didn't put it on there. Um, we're gonna, well, are there any board member announcements? I don't have any. No? All right, we'll move on to item number three, presentation. Presentation, 3601 North Mission Road, uh, 2010 North Lincoln Park Ave. Uh, 184 unit mixed income density bonus project proposed for eight parcels. And I named the parcels there, 3601 North Mission, 2010 North Lincoln Park, 3609 North Mission, 3615 North Mission, 2016 North Lincoln Park, 2020 North Lincoln Park, 2026 North Lincoln Park, 2030 North Lincoln Park, 2036 North Lincoln Park. Uh, presenter, well, Brian Silvera and Associates is the representative, but um, let's see, is, uh, the representative on the phone here, on the uh, attendees, could you please raise your hand? Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and let you, Justin. Cool. Oh, I don't see any Hi other there. hands up. Hi there. Hi. Hey. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Okay, okay. All right. So I saw uh, that we're the we are the first item on the agenda. There's another one. Is it okay if we swap those? Just because Brian, I think he's putting his kids to bed right now, and he can yeah. join us. He can join us uh, if we're the second item. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just cruise on to the next items, and we'll come back. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh huh. All right. So we're gonna cruise on cruise on down to B. 3B, discussion of possible action on letter to LADBS, LADOT, that's LA Department of Transportation, CD1 and CD14 regarding flat top. There's recent illegal grading, fencing, parking of vehicles as placeholders on recently sold hillside lots. Recent influx of unregistered or oversized vehicles parked on the ridge line and the possible, possible right of way, public right of way, uh, requesting towing of said vehicles. Um, so that's B. Uh, so um, the motion is uh, a letter. So Vince, uh, does anybody want to make a motion and then we'll talk about it? Yeah, I'll make the motion to create the letter. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, cool. So we have the first and second. So I'll just talk about it. Um, so up at Flattop, there's a couple uh, 
if you go up there recently, there's a bunch of like trucks and cars parked on the ridge line, like not on Fen Street, so really it's it's on uh, the Thomas side. There's like a foundation of a house somebody bought. It's where those pillars are with the graffiti. And there's like a truck and an RV parked there of the new owner who's illegally uh, excavating the site and grading it, flattening part of the hillside and importing a bunch of soil. I've been talking to some people up there, some, some joggers. They would look at it every day. So I checked into it, there's no permits. And then also near the baby flat top, there's like somebody bought a small parcel right at the, when you come down baby flat top at Fen and they put a fence all around the parcel and put like a camper in there with a little truck, like kind of like a, it looks like an Airbnb or something. It's kind of a cutesy cottage type of setup. But these are substandard hillsides and there should be no uh, vehicle parking on them. Um, so has, does anybody want to discuss this? Has anybody seen what I'm talking about? No, I think, I think it's a good idea just to put it on record, especially that there's no permits uh, for the sites that they're doing, whether, especially whether it's excavating up there. Yeah. They should have a, a permit because those, those areas are sacred areas and uh, they're just digging things up. Uh, yeah. And having the housing on it, well, that's different depending on what they're actually using it for, whether it is uh, public house, well, their own housing, or are they actually renting it out? Or maybe that's something we can look into if they're doing an Airbnb type thing, if we can search it in our area to see if it's not posted. Yeah, we just need to clarify what are the rules about just buying a plot of land, like you're, you know, these people are buying it and then putting the vehicles on there as a place marker, like that box truck for Flat Top Mansion. So it's like, these are uh, liquefaction zones too, that hillside, substandard hills, uh, earthquake, all that. So all this stuff could fall down. It's the same dialogue with that um, guy who put the shipping container up there a couple of years, so years ago. Uh, Mel, Mel? Hey. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I go up to Baby Flat Top like almost every day, and I've never like whoever built that fence with the two cars in it or the camper and the truck. They're, they either never come out or they're never there. It's such a weird setup because you can't even see anything from over the fence, so like they're not <laughs> like taking in any views or anything. But I've been waiting for someone to come out uh, while we're up there, and they never come out. So I don't know if there's nobody in there. I, I'm not sure what's going on, but. Anyways. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Um, and uh, yeah. So this isn't like unhoused residents in oversized vehicles. This is people who have purchased property for a hundred, couple hundred thousand bucks and put something on. Um, and uh, many of those parcels are registered to people in the Echo Park. So, uh, and they're entering through the Montecito Heights gate. Okay, so uh, that is our thing. So uh, any public comment on flat top and people like doing this, please raise your hand or press star nine. Do you have any comments about what's going on? We have one hand up, go developer. We have two minutes. <laughs> yes. And your detective work is impeccable. <laughs> and as you know, they're coming from the land of Jose Wazar. <laughs> they come in droves and they don't come in peace. And they go through Montecito Heights. As they come through Echo Park, even as far away as Downey, to invade your land and strip it away. <laughs> Remember, this was all Tongan land at one time. Yes, they, the white man stole it from the Indians. And then they repackaged it and sold it to Wall Street as junk bonds. And now you're sitting here at 6, 10 p.m. with a puppet developer. 
very unfair. So what you need to do is get a couple of large tow trucks, a couple of big guys, a couple of very large men with large hands <laughs> and a strong grip, and take that stuff, remove it, and send it where it belongs, to Azusa, the shithole where all the dirt comes from, from all the developers, because that's where they're trucking it to. I found that out last night. <laughs> and as you sit here, you wondered, why is this happening? <laughs> Developers, why does it happen? Campaign donations. Why is it not stopping? <laughs> because the FBI lets it go on. And that's what it is. So all of you have become unknowing puppets being used by developers and even the tentacles of Jose Weizar to this day are being felt as far away as Montecito Heights. Isn't it time that we stop this? Isn't it time? Eunices Hernandez, help us starting December the 1st. To... Oh, hello? <laughs> help us, Eunices, help us. <laughs> Thank you, Goat Puppet. Goat Developer. All right, so uh, any other uh, public comments on this item about flat top and people buying little lots, putting fences up, putting a box, like a truck on, box truck on it, and then just calling it a day and, no? Illegal activity, illegal grading. Any other board member comments or discussion? No. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go to uh, a vote now. Um, motion to approve the letter seconded by, who seconded it? Fernando. Okay, so uh, and then uh, roll call vote, please. All right, so motion is to approve the letter. A yes vote would be to approve, a no is to not approve. Sarah? Yes. Chente? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Richard. Yes. Simone. And Fernanda. Yes, it's unanimous. Motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. So all these letters, all the, all the votes that we're doing, their recommendations to tomorrow's general board meeting. Okay, so B, B1. Discussion and possible action on letter to Montecito Heights Improvement Association. LAFD at CD1 at CD14 requesting complete list of all key holders who have access to one, the gate on Montecito, Montecito Drive, two, the gate on Thomas Street, those two access points to flat top, a public road. Um, I have the council file. Yeah, th that was put up in the, in 1987 or whatever. That's when the motion was by uh, Gloria Molina to put up this gate that I don't think was actually Ever really voted on and it was just put up by another neighborhood in our neighborhood and so uh we want and basically some of the uh things about this gate was that they're supposed to supply a list to the fire department and all municipal agencies of who the key holders are because it's uh, exclusive use of public right away uh any huh? member comments on this or do we have I'll make the motion first to create the letter. Is there a second? Yes, I'll second it. Okay, Sarah seconds. And my, my only comment for it as a board member is that we should do it and we should have access to that. It should be on record so that we know exactly who's utilizing it and who has access to it because like everyone's saying, we're having all these concerns about who's using the, the, the hill or having access to these areas. So I agree on the letter. Cool. Any other board member discussion on this item? Yeah, I have a comment. Um, in order to get past the gates, you have to put in a code. And apparently like that code is only provided to like people that live on that street. And that seems super exclusive and 
totally privatizing that area of flat top. Um, so I, I definitely agree that that's not okay. Thank you, Karen. Any other board members? Yeah, I'm gonna add to that comment one more thing. Um, it also disenfranchises and totally just divides the class in Lincoln Heights because people who live on that street are homeowners to very expensive houses. And so essentially we're only giving access to those people and the rest of us um, don't have access to that, so. Yeah. Also, you know, initially when it was when it was initiated in 1987 by by the homeowners association of montecito heights which shouldn't have jurisdiction over lincoln heights right well it was done on uh sort of racist grounds of cholos partying and scaring like a couple people who claim they can't exit the fen street or something but now it's led to it being marketed as a gated community and real estate ads which is increasingly uh, becoming when you see how they bought up multiple properties for these subdivisions. And then um, the gate was unlawful, unlawful in the first place. I'm pretty sure I have to go deeper to the vault of the council file, go downtown. But um, what was I gonna say? What it's led to is uh, guys buying a parcel, getting a key and then renting it out for filming. So that's, you know, and then they're calling it like Lincoln Heights, like cool spot, film site. Yeah, so that's not okay. Any other board member? Board member? Nope. All right, we're gonna go to the public. Any attendees uh, have a comment about who has access to the gate at flat top? Please raise your hand or press star nine. We have goat developer. You have two minutes. <laughs> yes, the exclusive enclave. Yes, you you have to be a member to have the key. To have the key is to have great privileges over the rest of you. And you want to stop it? <laughs> yes, but it adds to the homeowners. But again, if people are advertising this as a gated community <laughs> and they're putting it on the value, increasing the value of their home, I would hope that none of you would be sneaky enough to go to the county assessor and ask them to reevaluate whether that should increase the baseline assessment value of those parcels. <laughs> no, none of you would, would do something like that, would you? <laughs> Oh, no, not these people. No, no, you would have to have horns and you would have to have a tail and fur to even begin to complicate yourself and mentally with your mind to use it in such a sneaky and deceitful way. <laughs> Imagine getting a letter called, what is it called? <laughs> uh, a supplemental assessment. A supplemental assessment. Yes, another $100,000 added on because it's a gated community. <laughs> and then these people would be coming here saying, no, no, it was all a mistake. We lied. There is no gated community. <laughs> yes. But again, none of you are like that. You're nice people. Yes, you're not animals. You're humans. <laughs> so remember, everybody, don't be somebody like you have a tail and horns. Because if you did, shit like this would stop right away. And we wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> oh, no. All right. Thanks, Goat Developer. Any other public uh, discussion, public comments on um, Flat Top and the exclusive gate that nobody has keys to except for a mysterious group of people. Um, please raise your hand or press star nine to comment right now. We have Nicole, you have two minutes. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm 
my name is Nicole. I've been living in Lincoln Heights for like over 10 years, pretty much. I grew up here and I've walked to the flat top and hiked there with my sister all the time. And, and I've seen the gate, but we usually just walk around it. And I, I really had no idea who that there was a certain group of individuals that had access to this gate. And um, even though you can still walk through it, I knowing now that it's it's like just public land that um, and, and you all feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I just I, I can't believe that it could be even used to rent out as a film location. Like that, that should be illegal. And if it isn't illegal, I, I would want to know why. I, I'm completely against it. And if you all um, do proceed with the letter, I'd love to uh, read it or see, you know, like what the outcome of this is because it's, it's incredibly interesting. I'm glad you guys brought it up. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Nicole. So all these letters are going to be um, on tomorrow's general board meeting where we uh, vote on them for uh, in the big time. Uh, yeah, so any other, um, okay, we have a hand up there. Uh, goat developer. Wait, but did goat developer just talk? Well, thank you. What an honor to get an extra two minutes. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> Are, aren't they nice? <laughs> yes, that's right. And again, I can repeat what I said before, but I will not do it. I appreciate, I will give the two minutes. I will defer it to Jose Luis Weizar, who I hear might be on the call. So, Mr. Weizar, I give you my two minutes. Take it away. <laughs> All right, thank you, Go Puppet. Mr. Weizar, could you please raise your hand? No, I'm just kidding. Um, any other public comments on the flat top gates, gate issue? Raise your hand if I start now. No? All right. So, Vince, we got a first and a second? Yes. I, I made the motion. Sarah seconded it. Now we go to the vote. All right. So, motion is to approve the letter. Sarah? Yes. Chente? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Richard. Richard. Simone. <laughs> Fernanda, yes, it's unanimous. Motion carries. Motion carries. Unanimous vote. Thank you, guys. All right, so now we're going to move on back to the uh, initial one. Item three. So this is the 3601 Mission Road slash 2010 North Lincoln Park Ave, 184 unit mixed use development. Um, so uh, the presenters, are you ready? Please raise your hand. All right, Jesse, I will be promoting you. And Brian, I will be promoting you. And so everybody knows we have the supporting docs on our uh, website or lhnc.carrd.co. That's the other website. Our link tree. All right. Hi there. Uh, hi again. It's good to see you all. Um, I always enjoy attending the other uh, the land use planning committee meetings, because I feel like I always, I always learn something at these meetings, honestly. Um, all right, uh, so I know that y'all are familiar with our development. Um, if I could share my screen, I'll just give a quick overview. Um, and then I know it's a short presentation tonight, which is fine since we've already kind of gone over this one. Um, am I able to share my screen? You should be oh, there able to. Okay. There we go. All right. So we also have some updated renderings for, for you all, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but we we just filed the project, which you probably know, on 
last Friday, I think, is when the case was created. Um, and so, again, here's a kind of an overview of our geographic context. We're across the street from uh, Lincoln Park on uh, Mission Road, right at the intersection of Mission and Lincoln Park Avenue. Um, and here is a view of the specific lots that our development project, um, our potential project would, would sit on. Um, because this is all one big block, I just wanted to make the distinction that we are, um, we're looking at these eight lots on the uh, west side of the lot and not developing the seven uh, additional lots on the, and those are not part of this project. So here is a rendering of the project looking at it from the corner of Mission and Lincoln. And this is, you know, currently where we are. I think last time we presented, we had some more kind of conceptual renderings. Um, and so, you know, we wanted to, to update you on um, the more up-to-date, more complete renderings. Here's a view of the project from the park. So of course we have, um, you know, sort of elements to bring it to human scale at the front end, it's a little bit scaled back. So all of the, the height, that seven feet is really concentrated in the middle of the development uh, so that the edges of the development are a little more um, scaled down. And then here we have, um, we have a view from Barbie Street, which is, um, the other front yard. So we've got two front yards actually on this one. We have one at Mission and then one here on Barbie. So here's our view from Barbie Street. Um, and then this is the same view on Barbie Street, but um, if you notice, it's like a little animation actually. There's a mural, a potential mural location that pops up. I know one of the things that we had discussed before was um, a way to make this development feel like it's part of the Lincoln Heights community. We, we want it to be part of the Lincoln Heights community and ultimately we want it to be something that's an asset to the, the, the people who already uh, reside in Lincoln Heights. Um, and so, you know, one of the ways that we wanna integrate that is through um, some kind of public art installation. So this is an idea of where it could be. This is not what the mural will look like. It's just kind of what the architect um, slid in there to stand as a uh, in the rendering. I wanted to talk, spend a little bit of time talking about uh, our need for housing and especially affordable housing. You know, our development um, is proposing 184 units, and 47 of them are are set aside for very low income affordable households. Um, and so that you know, our goal here. Um, and here's another slide that just kind of shows the same idea um, that, that people are overcrowding in, in units in Los Angeles in response to the shortage of housing and especially affordable housing. Um, our goal here is to create a mixed income development for the Lincoln Heights community. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we are still doing is we're not displacing existing housing uh, on this site what's currently there um, you know is is a parking lot that complements the existing uh, rehab facility and we would be replacing the the parking um, that the current rehab facility uses on those lots um, you know one of the ways that we're trying to keep this project based in Lincoln Heights is through our marketing plan we're working with the council office um, and we're also in communication with legal experts so um, that we can, you know, not go beyond the boundaries of what's allowed by uh, the fair, by fair housing laws, but make a genuine effort to make sure that these units are uh, the, both the, the very low income and, um, you know, the, the, the regular units are for the Lincoln Heights community. So. Um, one of the things that, that we're going to do is uh, do outreach in the community and help people sign up for the, um, the LA City has a portal where people can sign up 
if they're interested in affordable housing um, and then they can kind of pre pre qualify now those qualifications aren't taken are not actually verified um, until it's done by the landlord right just like in any other um, in any other situation where you're applying for housing the landlord's going to review your income documents for the very low income units um, it's sort of the opposite of the regular housing process and the landlord is making sure that you don't make too much money obviously typically when you're applying for housing the landlord is trying to make sure that you make enough money so but ultimately that's up to the landlord our goal here is to get people signed up and get people in the portal and then to have some kind of contact list say an email list where we can reach out to folks that we know said they're interested and let them know when our wait list is open, which should be after the covenants are um, recorded on the units. Um, we also want to concentrate new housing near valuable transportation and neighborhood resources. One of the mistakes that the city of Los Angeles has made, nay, I, I say, you know, probably the county of Los Angeles and even further beyond, you know, all of Southern California has made is that they've we've been developing. Um, and because because we build things so low, you know, we build maybe one or two stories, things have to spread out, right? And that that makes that forces everyone to have to drive everywhere. And I'm sure that folks on this call are familiar with all the problems that causes, not the least of all, um, traffic and unsafe streets. And so by concentrating new housing and especially especially mixed income housing near transportation and neighborhood facing resources, we can help to address the issue that we have with both uh, unaffordable housing and with housing being you know too far away for people to afford to have options outside of the outside of the personally owned vehicle um, and then of course we want to use this public art um, to really strengthen the relationship between the building and the neighborhood um, and so ultimately you know our project goal our big project goal is to make sure that we're building something that's going to be helpful to the neighborhood. That's gonna be an asset. Um, I appreciate you all being on this call and I appreciate uh, you know, getting to share a little bit about our development. Um, I think there's time for Q and A. Um, and so, yeah, but in the meantime, in case folks have to hop off or you wanna ask a question, um, you can always reach out to me. There's my email address on the screen or Brian Silvera. I'm with the office of Brian Silvera and Associates. So you can reach Brian Severe himself at the email address listed on the screen for him. Um, and, you know, of course, if, if, if you have questions or you have suggestions, we, we, want, to, we want to be an open line of communication. Um, and so um, please feel free to reach out. I'll go back to the rendering. This is sort of just to give context to the neighborhood transportation resources. This is something that is possibly planned for Cesar Chavez Bridge. Um, but really the point is that this is a really transportation rich neighborhood and there's a lot of potential here to create housing um, that, that people can inhabit <clears throat> and not have to own a car. Um, I think that's a really big asset in a city like Los Angeles. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll open it up for Q&A in case folks have any questions. Thank you, Jesse. Um, Vince, this is a, we're gonna be making a, an action on this item, correct? Correct. I think we're just doing a discussion tonight, if that's okay. Is the item marked discussion and possible action? Well, there, it's already gone to city planning, so we have to, we now can vote on, on the item. Cause there's, uh, yeah, cause the application was submitted to city council, so, or city planning commission. Yeah, we yeah the application was submitted. Yeah. yeah, we can make the motion to send it to the general meeting on Thursday mm -hmm. and have an official action taken by the the full council. So this would be a, plug a planning and land use committee determination and recommendation for the general board. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's, uh, okay, so board members, any uh, questions for Jesse or Thomas? Discussion? I have a, a question for Jesse. Um, I think the, yeah. oh, sorry, Fernanda? We have a couple of public comments. Should we move to those first? Yes, um, deal with that. Okay, so if anybody from the public, any public members want to comment on this item, please raise your hand or press star nine. We have Nicole.
Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, one question I did have uh, is about the, the units that are supposed to be for low income residents, do you all also have um, require so, like social security number or like credit history? Because like, for instance, my family, um, if we, we are low income, but if we wanted to be a part of these brand new units, uh, would like being um, undocumented be an issue? Because if so, I feel like that's something that maybe isn't really taking into consideration like the ethnic makeup of the community because you do have a lot of people who are undocumented that would like to have access to new affordable units such as this that will definitely, if they're not accommodated, they will just be left out. And that's unfortunate. Um, my One other concern that I have is about the, the height of these units and especially so close to the park and what that does to the view of all the other homes because you're pretty much just blocking the view for every other house on, on Lincoln pretty much um, to have like these like what look like from the picture to be like luxury apartments I could I could be wrong and I also wanted to address the like the mural like like murals are pretty but you can't just hire like a Latin artist a Latinx artist or like a cultural like artists and then have a cultural mural and then call it a day and say that that's for the community like it's beautiful but I don't think that these units as they stand now they just to me they seem like luxury condos that have a few exceptions um and units for other for other folks who do get to be on a wait list through a portal that they'd have to learn about and it's just it just seems like a very lengthy process and I was also wondering if there's gonna be a requirement, like a zip code requirement through this portal and through the low income units, like if a, that way you could determine that current Lincoln Heights residents would be prioritized in the, like, the selection process for the low income units. Um, so those are like my questions that if you guys have the time to address, that would be great. And then that's my comment, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. Do y'all mind if I hop in? And I think Nicole asked a lot of really valuable um, questions and some good comments too. Um, actually, I think Brian, maybe. Brian, are you, have you? Yeah, hi there. there maybe, do you want to just tag team on the responses? Well, uh, so, yeah. I, yeah, so the for the first one, um, I think the first one and the third one were similar. They were about kind of screening criteria and the process for getting a unit. Um, so the, the city regulates the process for which someone can pre-qualify. Um, they keep a, a, a list that does not require a social security number or, or anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, the, the process for applying would not preclude someone based on documentation status. Um, in terms of, um, you know, the, the units being, they, they are nice units. I will say, I think it, I think it is a really nice building. And I, you know, I think that affordable housing, sometimes it looks like affordable housing and sometimes it doesn't look so nice. Um, I'm really proud of this project because they will probably be some of the nicest affordable units that, um, you know, that that are in the, the area, maybe some of the nicest affordable units uh, in, in this side of the city in general. Um, I think that the, the so what was the, the view from what's behind us here on Barbie Street are two story, um, two story units at, at the most. They're also on a hillside. So this property, our property is fairly flat. Um, I'm sure y'all are familiar with this area, but behind us, there starts to be a slight incline. Um, and so, you know, folks at the very top obviously are gonna be, are gonna have a view. Um, but in, you know, we think that, we think that providing this housing honestly is, um, is pretty important to the city. And, and I don't know that the folks from Barbie Street in their, in the two story units um, had a, a great view of the park to start. Um, but we did step the building back to reduce any kind of shadow effects 
and to mitigate any kind of privacy concerns um, for these people back here on Barbie. So it, like I said, the, the real height is really in the, in the center of the building here. But over here, we top out at five stories. And then here along this edge of the building, we actually have two story townhouses. So it kind of matches more with the typology of those um, duplexes, um, those two story duplexes and quadruplexes over here on, on the other side of Barbie Street. Um, Brian, did you have something to add? Yeah, and I wanted to respond to the, the mural comments. And by the way, and Nicole, they were great comments and questions. Um, but I should introduce myself too. So I'm, I'm Brian Silvera from Brian Silvera and Associates. Uh, Jesse and I are working together on this project as, as the representatives. Um, Jesse, I want, I want to piggyback on something you said about the units uh, and the comment about luxury units. So uh, these are certainly not what we would consider to be luxury units. They are nice units because typically newer units are going to be nicer units. But in terms of their sizing, the, the market research that was done to kind of figure out what you know, the right size, right type of unit is here, um, you know, brought us to the conclusion that if we make these units too big or too nice, we're, we're really going to miss the market because this is not an area where, where people want to, you know, spend huge amount on rents. Um, and, and if we were to build a building full of giant luxury units, it would attract people from outside of the community, which would sort of, uh, you know, be contrary to the, the whole ethos uh, and what we're trying to do here. So, uh, but, in, in addition to that, and, and I think Jesse was getting at this too, is that the affordable units have to be the same type and quality as the market rate units. And so the nicer the market rate units are, the nicer affordable units you get. Those affordable units are going to range in price, you know, anywhere from around $700 a month uh, for, you know, a smaller unit, one bedroom type to, you know, maybe $1,500 a month. So the, the better the units are overall, the more the affordable uh, unit tenants benefit from that. Uh, and, then, and then the last comment about the mural, Nicole, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I think that, you know, to just slap a mural on a building, uh, you know, is not the same thing as creating a genuine connection between building and place. And quite frankly, there's also, a, I think, a limit between how much you get connect, you know, a newer building to uh, what is mostly an historic neighborhood. So we're just trying to do our best to bridge the gap. We, we're talking to local artists and muralists. So the idea is that it would be an artist whose work is already in this area. The person is from that area and their art is, is generally recognizable to the community. Um, if, if we can achieve that, uh, I, I think we've, we've done something to sort of connect the, the building to the neighborhood. Uh, of course, like I said, you can't, can't fully connect it. It's, it's very different in its architecture and scale, but uh, it's, I think it's, it's something. Uh, so uh, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. We have Chris B. Hi, my name is Chris. Um, where to start. Uh, the idea of, it, of going to the mural, if you wanna connect with the community and, and try to bridge some gap between this development and community, you could make it smaller. You could make it not so tall. You could push it back so there's some more space in front of it, but I know that would, that would create less units and that's not really your goal. The, the presentation is kind of offensive. I mean, I know you guys want to build something and I know you need to make money, but the attitude of coming in and pretending that you're going to connect by putting a mural up or, or whatever else, it's, yeah, just be straightforward. It's, you, you aren't doing this to provide housing for Lincoln Heights, you're doing this to make money. And I understand that. It's, it's like, a, it's so large. <laughs> There's just nothing that size anywhere near it other than the hospital. I, I don't understand why this can even fly at this height. It's ridiculous. Um, sorry, I'm trying to sound professional and not irritated. Um, this is not a walking neighborhood. So putting something in here, thinking that's gonna turn it into a walking neighborhood is also ridiculous. Uh, 
people drive here. Where, where are you going to walk to from this besides the park? I know you can get on public transit, transit and go from there, but you know, <laughs> it's all two story or less buildings throughout the, you know, the entire area. So it, this is not going to help it be a walking neighborhood. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what else to say. It, uh, the scale is way too big. It doesn't fit in. Uh, a mural is not going to help. Uh, it's not going to he help the neighborhood be a better walking neighborhood. You know, this would be fit if this was, you know, near Chinatown and the 110. It, this looks like something that would come up over there. There's nothing like this in this neighborhood anywhere. So I, it's offensive to me. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Chris. We have Tom Williams. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi, uh, Dr. Tom Williams. Uh, this is a disaster for all of Mission Road and Huntington Drive. This is totally out of scale for everything. It's the largest building on the way out from this building site to LA Boundary is four stories. Seven stories is just too much, but also on this one, is there going to be anything else to the north? So the whole concept of growth inducement is a disaster for Huntington Drive and Lincoln Park. There ain't no other buildings like this except for the Keck and the LA County Medical. There's also a matter that this particular project site sits in the recognized fault zone of the Upper Elysian Park Fault. It's mapped in Zemis, and my say putting such a resource on top of a fault line is a little bit of a problem. There's also a matter as to cars. Uh, on your one slide, you showed a bus lane. When is that going to get, be done? Ever? There's also a matter as to where's the driveway into this complex? So where are you parking the 360 cars that would be expected? Two cars for each for, for each room or uh, apartment, but also as to the impact upon the <laughs> uh, curb lanes in this area. Anyone living in there knows that you never have empty car lanes for, for parking. So it's a disaster. Uh, I hope that it has a requirement for an environmental impact report rather than some sort of expedited uh, categorical exemption. And a real study done it because you're going to set the mode for the entire eh, three miles, four miles of Mission Road and Huntington Drive. And I might say I would consider this to be a, a growth inducement, perhaps from the Keck development, because they're proposing some similar buildings for, I say, students and for faculty in the county lands. But this is in the city. So just consider what it would be like if all of Mission and Huntington Drive had seven stories on one side. Hey, how about the other side? So we're quite concerned about this and somewhat like a project over in Eastern and Lombardy, we may see you later on.
So that's all. Need an EIR. Thank you, Tom. We have phone number ending in 682. You may press star six to unmute yourself. I was calling in also, so. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Williams. <coughs> we have Eliza. Hi, good afternoon. This is Elisa. Um, thank you all for uh, having this meeting and uh, providing the community an opportunity to speak. Uh, the, during the last uh, neighborhood council, when you and your team presented the renderings. We spoke a lot about what were some of our concerns, which were the height of the building, the implication of more traffic in and around the neighborhood, the displacement of Socorro Cry help, which at the time you had mentioned, they would not be displaced. And I shared with you as a neighbor living across the street from the location, they had already been displaced a few weeks prior. During today's conversation, you shared that you've done outreach and you've done market research. And I have to tell you that as a current resident, you have done no outreach and you have done no research among the people who currently live in and, in and around the area that you plan to develop. I find it extremely disheartening that at, you make it seem that you are wanting to be a part of the community, wanting to extend an, a hand, become, um, a presence that quote unquote is helping us when in fact you are not helping any one of us. You are hindering the opportunities for us to be able to live in a location and a space that is calm, that is for us, and that is also now going to be taken away from us. I think that when you do these things, all you're doing is creating fear. You're creating a sentiment of being untruthful. And it, it's, again, it's very upsetting to me as I'm sitting here and listening, because we walked away, at least I walked away with the sentiment that you were taking into consideration all of the points and concerns that we had brought forth. And it doesn't seem like anything was, um, was really taken to heart and tried to make any adjustments. Uh, again, if you did do market research, I would love to see those results. I would love to see who you actually surveyed. I'd love to see the list. Was it a quant or a qual combination? I'd love to see what the scales you were using were. How did you come up with the numbers and these attributes and characteristics which helped you develop, quote unquote, this development? I think that would be really insightful. And again, this so-called outreach, I'd like to know what kind of outreach did you do? Who did you speak to? When did you come by? Did you, did you have one-on-one -on -one conversations? Again, the, from our personal experience, myself and my families and some of the neighbors, the only outreach that has been done have been, the, have been your clients, the investors who have come to ask us to sell our current properties and to which we have said no. So I would, outside of that, we've never had anyone come to our home to speak with us. So if I could get some clarity on that, as well as the research that you've done, I would appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for that comment, Elisa. Okay, we have Jab Frog. I just wanna say if there's anybody from the public who wants to comment on this, please raise your hand or press star nine. Uh, I, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. First of all, thanks for the opportunity to um, to make a comment. Uh, <clears throat> well, this is the perfect example of gentrification on steroids. This is bad. This is what was approved in in, uh, in Sacramento, and uh, they can build up to nine stories high anywhere close that is close or within a mile of a bus stop. This is nothing new. <clears throat> And also I find it, find it uh, extremely disrespectful for these persons 
who are presenting this, uh, this uh, project tonight to come here and try to convince us like if we were dumb, that a mural will, will erase the criminal effects of gentrification against the families of hardworking, low-income families in our communities. And that it will create a bridge that is gonna uh, make us closer to uh, and friendly to these to this monstrosities. This won't help our communities. In the Lysian Valley, there is several developments going on right now. Um, and none of them has uh, helped the community uh, members, long-time community members. Um, several families has applied to the low-income units. Zero, zero has uh, has uh, been uh, uh, rented out to uh, to any of these families because why? Because they're Mexican, American, Latinos, and poor. So any of these low-income uh, units will serve anybody from, from our communities, from Lincoln Heights. No, once they, they build all this, they're gonna have the control to choose who's gonna, choose and pick who's gonna be uh, renting out the, all these units. So forget about uh, the, the, the how, how, whatever uh, um, amount of uh, uh, low-income units on this, uh, uh, on this uh, development, it won't help our community directly. This is this is wrong. This is this is disgusting and 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 out of it's out of character. Uh, it's just it's just bad. This is this is bad. I don't know how these people can come to to our communities and tell us to our faces that it's good for our community and this is going to help us. And 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 they try to help us and and be friend, be community. Um, uh, accepted uh, by your communities when, when basically what, what they're doing is displacing our families from the places that we have uh, we have living for uh, lived for several uh, generations. Thank you, and say no to this crap. Thank you. Thank you, Jabs. We have uh, Camarillo. Thank you, Lincoln Heights, Jesse and Brian for these conversations. Uh, I've been watching this development project and the presentations from the very beginning. And I wanna recognize the facts that you are attempting to tailor this development project from our feedback. However, I would need to agree that the mural and reconsideration of the building design just isn't enough. The height of the complex, I would imagine, is because you'd like to maximize the amounts of units with the provided space. If this is that case, it's important to reconsider who occupies these units. There must be a seamless connection between the people of Lincoln Heights where our lives can be benefited. My only question is, can this development project guarantee and prioritize the people of Lincoln Heights by offering first offers to both low income units and regular listed units? Uh, can this be arranged and or promised to us? And I'd also like to see some community outreach and actions you've been taking to uh, get to know the community or to benefit us as well. Thank you so much for your time. We have GOAT developer. Yes, look at the pretty fake picture isn't it pretty <laughs> but as you know it's not going to look like that is it look at the perfect sidewalks look at all the nice trees where are we going to get the water for the trees yes and look at those balconies do you have to pay extra rent for a balcony i'm sure just like parking i'm sure it's included in the lease because landlord developers are such kind, considerate people like myself. <laughs> You're not kind and considerate. You have horns for Yes, but again, isn't it better to deal with the devil that you know? <laughs> yes. Who's going to clean up the tagging? Who's going to water those fucking trees? Who's going to trim them when they get overgrown? Is there going to be street parking? 
where are the parking meters? Or are you going to have bike lanes followed by those white cones? Yes, as you can see, this picture is something that came out of the mind of a developer like myself. Yes, I, yes, look at that. Yes, wouldn't we all like to live in a place like that and look at all the happy people? But we know that that's not reality. Go Trumpet wants a more accurate picture of this project. We want to see what it looks like in real time, where it's actually going to go. Because we know the only place that looks like that is the something out of the matrix. <laughs> nothing looks like that in LA, nothing. <laughs> totally fake. That's right. And then we have the balcony on the second floor there, as you can see with the with the with the umbrellas. Look at those umbrellas, yes. Sitting on your deck and having a latte. As you wonder, where is the $3,450 lease payment going to come tomorrow? Because tomorrow's rent day. <laughs> yes, many of you on this call forgot about that, but Go Puppet Developer never forgets about rent day. Yes, these are market rates. These aren't going to be affordable housing. No, we don't build affordable housing that looks like that. No, our affordable housing is on those lots in Montecito where you put up a tent and an RV in the back of it and hide. That's the only affordable housing we have. So, are you going to do the right thing? <laughs> oh, you want a denial. Yes, are you going to deny it? Face the devil. Look at the demon and say, no, this isn't right. This is not going to be affordable housing. And if it's built like this, nobody here living here is going to be able to afford it. No, only people from the United Arab Emirates would be able to afford something that nice. <laughs> so again, as I know, my remarks are so happy and uplifting, but Again, I try not to be too bucolic in my, in my assessment of these things. Yes, as a developer, I know the first thing about it. And I have a dream. A dream one day to be able to build a hotel in the middle of the 101 freeway in Studio City, where I'll be going tonight before the Studio City Neighborhood Council and seeing how can I do that. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. Yes, finally, you have seen the truth. Yes, the door is closing on the middle class. It's closing on all of you, but not for developers. Pimps. Pimps. Bankers. Bankers. They are all making a huge amount of money, and they are having a good time, as it should be, according to Donald Trump. <laughs> Thank you, Go Puppet. Yes. All right, so Fernanda, uh, uh, we have two more hands up. And if you're in the public and you want to ask a question or comment on the project at Lincoln Park, across from Lincoln Park, please raise your hand or press star nine. One of the hands up I've already called on and confirmed that uh, he also had his hand raised with his name. So he's calling in and already participated. And the other hand was someone that had already spoke and that hand just went down. So again, if anybody else would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand or press star nine. Otherwise we will move forward with um, board member comments. Okay. Yeah, we can always come back to public comments. So we're gonna move on to uh, board member comments. The board members, any um, discussion? My, mine was more looking at, like, for example, these projects, I agree with, with a lot of what the public is stating. I've seen these projects before. This, this is a money-making project. That's why we would hope that developers wouldn't jump on the affordable housing and how nice it's going to be and what they're trying to do for the community. It's disingenuous of a developer to do that, to think that they can come in with the intent that this is for the public or somehow the use of the the people in the neighborhoods 
So the federal the, the federal housing law does not allow for them to say that these are just for Lincoln Heights people. So it goes into a lottery in which other people can then still in the neighborhood displacing. So the project itself can't claim that it won't displace housing or people or have an effect on the community because it cannot legally offer it to residents of Lincoln Heights. That's number one. The other part of it is when you look at a developer and they approach us saying that they want to be good neighbors and they want to help us and they want to help the city and solve these social issues that we have, but you also add so much, so many problems to it. You're, this whole project is part of the USC projects that they have. All the land around there has been bought. And what you're seeing here is the future of what Lincoln Heights is going to be. The rendering of the streets and transportation, those haven't even hit Metro yet. They've had that plan for a long time to make it into a, a TOC, a transit-oriented community. The fact that you have affordable housing only means that you're following the problems of the past of the city of LA. We had covenants already. We're coming up on the 30 year covenants. The covenants that you guys have are 50 year covenants. That's not gonna help us. Developers are just kicking the can down the road on what we already know is a failed system. And when we look at the city and we look at developers and we wanna say, do they have good intentions? I mean, for most people in our neighborhood, they would look at all aspects of this without having a law to require them to do it because their intention was to really look at the benefit of the health, safety, and welfare of the public. But I can tell on this project by its height size, I don't know if they're aware of it or not, and most of them are. There's no water in the city of LA. If you develop with density, where will you get the water for this building and your new tenants? What we know about these big buildings and how they're designing them at some point in time, someone's going to get taxed more for that water because of these big developments that are coming. We don't have those resources anymore like we used to. For a city or a person or a develop, even a corporation, we know it's profit-driven. That's why this project makes no sense to our, our community. The, the values that we have here are way different. And the government doesn't apply to what we need for our neighborhood to secure our people here so that they can have a, a family and plan a future and have good resources. So no, I find it very disingenuous of the developer to approach this like most of the public and to say somehow some way this is gonna help us or be nice to us. Well, you may have a right to build, you may have a right to conduct business, but this fails on all the other stuff of ethics and moral values, which we all know that People that focus profit over people have none of those values. And it's what's missing from City's Hall and it's what's missing from our policy and what's missing today on building housing. So I'm definitely will not support a project like this, whether by right or not, because as an elected official, we do have our, our, our oath to protect the health, safety and welfare of the people. And since City Hall won't do it for us, our neighborhood council and I encourage our committee members and our board members to uphold the health safety rule for the people of Lincoln Heights. Thank you. Thank you, Chanta. We have Melanie. Hi. Um, Thanks, Chente, and thanks to all the public, because everyone really put uh, to words just everything that's been going through my mind, but I wanted to just mention a couple of things. Um, I did want to reiterate that just because you're not like taking over an existing structure or like directly displacing uh, residents, buildings like this do cause displacement. Um, so I'd advise you not to come into a, you know, a neighborhood council committee meeting and, and say things like that because we we know we experience firsthand that that's that's not the case i see mr harris left maybe maybe they'll come back um also uh yeah i think i'd prefer if um you know if you are going to put profits over people like chente said um just say that that's what you're doing uh, i i prefer that to like pretending that you guys are trying to do something good for our community because you're not, it will hurt us. It, it will cause uh, displacement. It will cause violence, it will cause death. 
And um, if you do move forward with this, if you get your approval, please don't put up a mural uh, on the side of the building to make it seem like the community has rubber stamped this because we won't. Um, I'd prefer you just like allow our local graffiti artists to tag it um, at will. Um, that would be better than pretending that our input mattered by putting up some mural. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Melanie. Um, I also have several comments. Um, it's unfortunate that our presenter has left this meeting. Oh, they're back. Okay. Sorry, I thought that you had left. Um, uh, thank you for taking the time to be a part of this meeting. Um, I do have to say that during our last meeting where you first initially presented, uh, the community just like today had a lot of feedback and genuine concerns. And I'm very disappointed to see that most of that, if any, was considered. Um, and the <clears throat> it's already been filed with the city planning commission. So there's not much to do about that. Um, and I'd like to know exactly what you guys considered from all of the feedback that you promised you would take into account the last meeting that we had. Um, and I also wanted to echo the comments that um, you're not directly displacing anyone because uh, the Socorro Rehab Center that is there, they've already been kicked out of their facility. I want to emphasize that again. Um, uh, it's being said that this development is only on the parking lot, um, but that facility, it's, it's empty and there are uh, construction trucks already emptying everything that's inside of that building. Um, as I mentioned during the last meeting, my mom lives right across the street from there. So we see firsthand um, what's happening and she tells me all of the time. Um, and on top of that, uh, I one of the, the things that just, just really illustrates how invasive and disruptive this project is, um, currently that site has an alarm system that <laughs> very harassingly and violently says, you are on private property. And that alarm is triggered very easily. My mom can't even walk her dogs on the sidewalk without that alarm going off and blaring. Everyone that lives around that building has heard that alarm nonstop. And I have to say that is not okay. Not only is the sidewalk public and the public pedestrians have access to it, there should be no alarm saying that. Um, that just, it really just goes to show there's nothing harmonious about this project and how you guys have come about it. There's a lack of transparency. Um, our feedback from last time wasn't even taken into account. Um, and I just, uh, I, I would not support this project at all. And um, the last point that I wanted to make um, is the very low income apartments. Um, I believe you said it was 47 out of the 184. That's roughly 25%, which really isn't a lot. <clears throat> um, and I want to point out that um, these very low income apartments and these agreements, these covenants, they don't protect anyone. They don't protect the tenants. They are not in their best interest. We just had tenants from a subsidized housing come into our meeting, the last general board meeting, um, wherein those covenants of their low income housing have expired and there are zero protections for them. And now that apartment building is raising all of those units at market value. And these are tenants residing in low income units. And so this facade of low income housing is really just that, a facade. Um, the developer in the city gets millions of dollars for that subsidized housing. But as soon as that covenant ends, they can bring it back up to market value. And the laws that are in place, the 
the law that Government Newsom just passed effective January 2021st specifically does not include low-income subsidized housing, meaning there is no protection for these tenants. And so bringing in this uh, straw man fallacy argument that you're bringing in low-income housing and helping is, is not true because this sort of low-income housing is truly a scam. Um, once that time limit is up, it is up and it's back up to market value or even as soon as that tenant moves out of that unit, that unit, that unit goes back up to market value. Um, and as we've said before, uh, the people of Lincoln Heights wouldn't be able to afford this kind of unit. I could talk about this until my face is blue, but as proven, we aren't really being heard here, but either way, I really wanna commend and thank the public for coming out today on this platform and speaking the truth. Um, this is exactly the sort of thing that we need um, involvement, uh, participation, and documentation. Um, and I, I just want to say, if anyone from the public, if anyone in this meeting would like to join our Planning and Land Use Committee, please email me at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com. And I'll go ahead and um, respond to you as soon as I can. Thank you. And next we have Sarah. Thank you, Bernie. Um, can you could I share my screen, Fernanda? Yeah, we can hear you. Or can you can I share my screen? Oh, I think you can. So you should be able to. Um, whatever. Okay, it's only letting me do one. Okay, I'll just do this one. Okay, so uh, can you guys see this? Yeah. So um, this is from the site plan for the project that was just submitted to the City Planning Commission. So it says it has the number of units. So it's 184 units here. Y'all can see this? So uh, it has a breakdown, one, two, and three bedroom units and studios. Okay, so three bedroom units, four. Two bedroom units, 21. One bedroom units, 73. Zero bedroom studios, 86. So um, this is not targeted to our community because the community is a community of families where the average uh, home occupancy is 4.2 people. Um, get off the desk. Uh, okay, so um, now I'm, can you guys see this uh, real deal thing? Do you see that what, what, I'm, what I have up now? It's still on the bedroom. Okay, here, let me go back. Damn. I think you can just reshare your screen, yeah. Another one. Okay, so okay. So here we go. Um, so that you know, the people presenting today are the representatives, like lobbyists. They're not the developers. So the developers named Shay Yadin of Brennan Capital, Brenner Capital, but here's a thing that just came out today from a real estate oriented site called Real Deal. Um, blah blah blah. Developer wants to build his thing. Okay by the firm Brenner Capital. Uh, we really believe housing is needed in Los Angeles, Yadin said. He added that the project will also increase the neighborhood's vibrancy by adding density and that his team was in touch with nearby USC affiliated medical center. They just don't have, they just don't have a lot of good housing options. Get off the desk. He said of the hospital staff because the area hasn't seen much development for decades. Blah, 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 uh, okay. Bought it for 13.7 million, blah, blah. Uh, uh, okay, so yeah. So, I mean, it's like, we're talking about, there's uh, three, three bedroom, wait, four, three bedroom units, 21, two bedroom units, and then like 87, zero bedroom units. The, uh, Investor already said it's targeted towards USC. Um, I'm gonna break down another thing. So we have this all in our supporting docs. Um, so there's a, they're applying for a categorical exemption. Um, sorry guys, I'm having issues. Let's see, there, share. Okay, so you see this again, drive Google. So on our supporting docs, we have the renderings, findings, environmental report, categorical exemption application. So there's uh, 
a bunch of protected trees on the site. And there's a tree report. So they're gonna remove a bunch of trees. Tree expert, Stephanie Reed, findings. And so they identify each kind of tree. I really uh, recommend everybody go look at these supporting documents. So this is not an empty parking lot. It's basically um, the backyard for a long time. It used to be a sanitarium um, with many trees, an extension of Lincoln Park as it was originally part of the, uh, anyway, I'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, so here's some of the trees and it talks about the ones that are going to get cut down or removed to be removed, to be relocated. Um, so it's already a loss of our trees, uh, of protected trees. Oops, geez. Um, but I wanna show you one more thing of, oh my God, oh, here. So, I make this big, we're gonna make it bigger. So this site where the proposed site on Lincoln Park Ave and Mission, you know, was a it's a historic site. It was a site of the uh, California Alligator Farm, Lincoln Park Alligator Farm and the Ostrich Farm, which operated from 1923 to 1953. I think the Ostrich Farm went later, but um, it's a world renowned crazy uh, landmark. Um, here's one of the old Sanborn maps. Uh, I think this is from 1921 or 1951. Maybe this is 1951. So you can see the ostrich farm and the alligator farm. Um, and here is the state of the site now, which is called a parking lot, which it is not, which is the site where the ostrich farm and alligator farm was. And this is where the protected trees are. And this is where our trees are. And this, these will get cut down or, quote, removed or moved. Um, I just want to go through these pictures. They're kind of cool, but not just cool, but this is a notoriously famous site. But also, I'm going to get into something funkier. There's the ostrich farm. Now, this used to be the Sea Lake Zoo property, or it ab abutted that. Um, there's a baby with the ostrich at the ostrich farm. That's across at the DMV, Ostrich Farm. Okay, so this is the site in the 19, maybe 1940s, the Lincoln Park Retreat Sanitarium. Uh, walled in there. Um, so here's some people's stories about it, about it being previously the, the alligator farm. Uh, a guy lived there who was a former Major League Baseball player. <laughs> alligator Farm, Alligator Ostrich Farm. Uh, and that's this is the block in 1951 with the Sanborn edits of edits of a 1921 map. So you can see, so uh, there was an issue like this, a bunch of this tract was owned by the county. So I don't know what happened. Um, but I want to talk about something else too. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, it's like a historic site. It's like one when people talk about the energy of Lincoln Heights and the vibe, it's like that Lincoln Park wasn't the only park. Lincoln Park used to go well through the Sea Lake Zoo and all that. It used to go all the way up to where Forever 21 is and then down to Hazard Park and uh, even over where East Lake is too. Um, this is like 100. Lincoln Park is one of the oldest, it is the oldest park in LA, uh, 1880. Um, East Lake Park or East LA Park. So, I mean, by building something like this, it really is a, not only a slap in the face, but it's um, violence. So it's like a knife in some, it's a pastoral sort of, uh, we even had a racetrack, you know, the Ascot racetrack, right? It's like further encroaching upon our green space, it's further encroaching upon the quality of life and the health, safety and welfare. We already through the Model Cities program got all the other side of behind 7-Eleven destroyed with uh, warehouses. And you know, it's like county property that's never used for nonprofits. 
it's like this will further harm us. And it's already been indicated by the investor that this is for USC employees. So um, that's all, you know, you, you know, I appreciate that you guys represent, you know, you do your job, you come and talk to councils and stuff, but you're not the owner, it's his intent, right? It's his decision. So he's already decided this is for USC. And uh, now we have, you know, it's, which is uh, pretty much that it. It's and also it's like the density bonus. It's like you're ask you're not like getting it. You have to ask us for it. It's like you're asking for entitlements. So you go through the community. So it's like these aren't guaranteed. And uh, yeah, forty seven uh, low income unit, very low income units in a hundred eighty seven unit thing. That's already like increase its density crazy it's like our community can only afford extremely low income units and then also with this lottery with the rest of the county to get these affordable units it's not um viable it's not good it's uh this is this is like the wall of chinatown this is like a wall on on well across from the adelante east side development plan where a lot of the parcels have been rezoned so uh we're just seeing this happen it's all going crazy now the uh snatching up the of the land, pretending it's not for USC when it is. One bedroom apartments are and zero bedroom apartments are not for the people of Lincoln Heights. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we have uh, Benny Madera's hand up. Yeah, thank you, um, Bernie. So I'm glad you ended with that, Sarah, about the pretending that it's not for USC when it is. There's a lot of that going on. A lot of um, USC is doing a lot of pretending. I mean, you go right up the street at uh, what is called what, East Prep High School. I mean, that is pretty much a USC charter school, you know, under a different name. Um, I, I wanted to... Um, yeah, praise a lot of the community members and fellow board members on their comments. I mean, they basically said a lot of what I'm thinking. Um, but USC expansion, I think, is like the biggest threat to our community right now. And um, th this is an example of that. We, we really have to um, stop because... Uh, as has been said, the, the plans are not for us. It's for, you know, their students, faculty, staff, institution, you know, the health science campus. And so, again, I, I just am feeling really good about the comments and about the community and how you've come out and, and seen, uh, you know, the threat that something like this poses. To, to, to our community. And we can't talk about USC without talking about gentrification. I mean, they're a big part of it. And this is a perfect example. So just wanted to end with that, that, you know, USC expansion is, is in my opinion, the biggest threat and we need to stop it. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Um, before I go back to Brian, I do see that we have one more public comment. Group developer. Group developer, you have been unmuted. All right, um, so we'll move on to Brian. Hi there. Um, so th there were a lot of things said. I, I don't want to take too much time by trying to, to respond to all of it. Uh, I think, Jesse, if, if you wouldn't mind, oh, you don't have screen control. If, if we could have screen control back, I'd like for Jesse to put up my email address and her email address. Uh, because I, I'd really be happy if, if folks reached out to us directly so that we could 
continue these conversations. Uh, lots to talk about, and, and I don't think that this is the right forum. So uh, if if you're still on or if you can see the screen, uh, please uh, reach out to either Jesse or myself. Um, and, and I would like to now just very quickly address you know some of the broader points or, or more common points that were made. <clears throat> so, you know, Jesse and I uh, encounter this issue quite a bit uh, when we represent projects of something being incompatible with the neighborhood. Usually it's, it's the height or the lack of parking or just general, you know, architecture. Uh, there, there are a lot of comments that, that are discussed. I think, you know, Je Jesse spoke about this in her initial presentation. Uh, the Los Angeles uh, and, and the broader LA County area has done not only a very poor job of planning uh, so that we need to rely on automobiles uh, for pretty much everything, which is just not, not sustainable from a planning standpoint, it's not sustainable from uh, an environmental standpoint. Uh, and, and so a lot of these cities, Los Angeles especially, are trying to undo a lot of mistakes of the past so that the future doesn't have to, you know, continue to breathe uh, carbon monoxide from, from cars. Uh, and so the state and, and the city have adopted policies, not only to address the housing crisis, but to do things like, um, you know, sort of reduce the amount of parking that's, that's required. You see this all over the place in policies from the state and the city. Uh, but it, it it inevitably leads to sort of a, a natural tension between new development and, and existing place. Uh, because it, it is, I, I, I grant you, it's very hard to see plans for a seven story building and think that belongs in our neighborhood. And I, I wouldn't expect people to ever have that natural reaction to this. Um, this is a function of zoning policy uh, and this is something that the city wants because they they want us to build more units. Uh, we need to build more units. So people don't like to hear that, but but we do, and we need to build them at a much higher rate than we've been building them. And twenty five percent affordable is a very very large percentage of affordable. If you look at you know typical density bonus projects, now you know something like uh, you know supportive housing or one hundred percent affordable development which is subsidized, this is not subsidized, uh, is a little bit different, but it, it typically doesn't lead to as nice of a, a product. And, and it creates sort of, you know, a, I, I don't like to use this term, but, you know, sort of a, an over-concentration of very low-income units, uh, which is, you know, is, is not, in our opinion, sort of the utopian view of how affordable units uh, should be in a community. They, they should be shared with market rate units and they should all have access to the same amenities. Uh, and so this, this is an attempt to do it. It's, it's a very large building uh, and it's in, in an area that has very small buildings. So it's gonna feel very large, uh, but it needs to be, uh, we need to be building more of these responsibly, but we need to build more of these uh, because we need to address this housing crisis and we need to address the affordability crisis. And every time one is built, you're gonna have a building that's quote unquote out of character or out of scale in a neighborhood. Uh, and I believe that the city and the state are gonna to continue to encourage the construction of buildings like these until we put a dent in our housing deficiency. So I will not try to convince you that seven stories in a neighborhood characterized by one and two story buildings is, is not gonna stick out. It is, um, but it's, it's the first, it's probably the first of many in Los Angeles, maybe not this neighborhood, uh, but we, you know, Jesse and I, uh, you know, we're, we're not just tools for the developer. This is the kind of project that we advocate for, that we believe in. We're both housing advocates. This could be a much smaller project. There could be fewer units uh, and it could be all market rate. Um, and you may view that as a good thing if it's a smaller project, um, but it's, it's not a good thing in, in a broader view. It's not a good thing because it doesn't do enough to house people who need housing. If not in this neighborhood, then, you know, regionally uh, and 
if you build a smaller project, you're going to get fewer affordable units. Uh, in fact, if you build a small enough project, you won't get any affordable units because there's no uh, there are no existing units. There's no replacement requirement here. Uh, so, you know, big big is both good and bad. Um, it's it's bad for the reasons I just stated. If, if you want your neighborhood to look the same, it's not going to look the same. But you're going to house a lot of people, which is something we desperately need to do. And we're going to be, begin to plan in a way that's much more responsible. So we have a lot of people located along a street that's planned for future uh, mobility improvements, future micro mobility and, and bus lanes and this sort. So um, I, I truly, I understand the sentiment around the building being too large. Uh, and this is, <clears throat> this is the beginning of the new future of development in Los Angeles, uh, at least until we do something about our, our housing deficit. Um, that's, that's really all I can say about that. Um, and then just a couple of other quick things I, I wanted to mention. I think there's there's a little bit of misinformation floating around about the Cry Help Center. So, and, and I spoke to them myself directly because I wanted to get the the real story. The real story is they have been planning on leaving for a long time. The person who who owned this property before them uh, apparently did a very poor job of maintaining their building. So they've been looking to purchase their own building. Uh, in, uh, I think it's the Hollywood area. And they were already one foot out the door uh, when the current owner bought the property. So um, they're definitely not being displaced as part of this project. Um, and you're, you're welcome. And you know maybe you ought to verify that directly with them if you'd like, if, if you don't just want to take our word for it. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I want to go through my list and just hit the the big ones, and then I'll, I'll turn it back over. Uh, Sarah, you mentioned the tree report. I, I don't know if you, you got around to reading it in detail, but there are protected trees, yes. Uh, and, and part of the report is, is that we're going to be uh, transplanting those trees on site. So those trees will be staying on site. We're not just coming in and, and chopping them down and, and mulching them. So uh, the city has an ordinance uh, we had the option to replant trees at a four to one, four to one ratio, uh, but they would have been much smaller trees and, and not as significant. And so we opted instead to, uh, to transplant the existing trees. Uh, sorry, just uh, looking for one other thing I wanted to respond to here. Oh. Yes, and so you know, J Jesse talked about this as well, but I, I think you know we didn't really have time to go into it in that initial presentation. So we we never intended to overpromise that we could give some sort of you know uh, right of return or pri you know priority to to local folks uh, for these units. Fair ho fair housing law will not allow that, and so we have been um, you know we've been talking to the council office trying to figure out a way to you know to get as many local people in this building as possible without running afoul of, of fair housing law and so one one of the things that jesse mentioned uh is we're going to try you know through our, our continuing outreach to get people uh signed up pre-registered on the, on the housing department website for an affordable housing unit that doesn't put them on any list for the, for our project at, at the time but at least they'll be in the queue. Uh, but then the other thing that we can do is we can keep those people posted because as soon as the covenant is recorded for this building, then the wait list opens up for this building. And so if we can give local people a heads up that we're about to record the covenant and they're already pre-registered in the system, they can then add themselves to the wait list. And, and in that way, you know, have a better shot at the units than if they were, you know, just kind of floating around the, the LA uh, Housing Department website. So um, we will, you know, we, we want to make ourselves available to everyone. Um, we have been doing outreach. Sarah, I think I, I reached out to you directly uh, just to meet up and have coffee. I'd love for you to be my liaison for this neighborhood. Uh, there are other groups we've been talking to, Sacred Heart Church and, and their congregation. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, please, any, anyone who wants to talk to us, we're, we're available to speak to anyone, anytime. You have our email and uh, I think I'll just leave it at that. But thank, thank you all for, for your comments and, and your concerns. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So uh, any other board members have any uh, comments? Okay, so we have some hands up on the attendee side. We have go developer. <laughs> yes. So as you see, what did we learn today? <laughs> yes, we learned that most of the units are little tiny, teeny little bachelor units to be used by students, mostly paying six figures for a diploma. And one day, President Biden's grandson, who will become president in 50 years, will give another $20,000 debt forgiveness. Meanwhile, everybody will pay their 7 to 11% interest on their useless degrees. <laughs> And that's the reason why it's configured the way it is. This isn't about families. No, 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 no. This is about junk bonds. This is about Rick Caruso. How do you think he got the $45 million to drop on his little race for mayor? Why would he want to be mayor in the first place? <laughs> to buy it? No, stupid, because he's getting old. He's going to get it all, and one day very soon, he'll be put in a wheelchair and rolled into a farm like that farm for the alligators, as his children will chop up his ill-gotten gains for themselves. And that's what this project's about, building higher and higher and higher and smaller and smaller and smaller little boxes to put humans in, like a bunch of chickens. Muck, 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 muck. Or a bunch of dogs. <laughs> or a bunch of pigs. <laughs> yes, and smaller little boxes so they can charge more per square feet. Is that what we want? <laughs> no, that's right. What we want is to stop the insanity. Get these kids to go to trade school. Learn plumbing and electrical and internet. <laughs> I met somebody today that's stuck in the country a couple of months ago. He got an internet certificate and he's been offered a job for $110,000. <laughs> no college degree here and no apartment either. So it can be done, people. And you heard what the demons are saying. It's not their fault. They just are advocates for housing. Yes, go pop it on, however, he wants to keep trees. He wants to keep open spaces. He wants to increase the canopy cover. So when it gets 110 degrees over in your area, like the valley, you'll be able to have trees for shade. The developers don't want that. They want you to go ahead and live a lot less longer so they can take your social security benefits. <laughs> wow, that's right. And that's why I'm the honest developer, the goat puppet developer. <laughs> All right, thank you, goat puppet, goat developer. We have Tom Williams. Tom? Hello. Hi. Okay, getting double back. Okay, Dr. Tom Williams, what is the proposal from the committee for consideration by the neighborhood council tomorrow? I haven't heard any proposal for a motion to either approve, deny, oppose uh, this particular project. So the real question is, 
is the committee going to have a proposal going to the board tomorrow? That's all. Thank you, Tom. Next, we have John Yu. Sorry, I raised my hand by accident. No, all good. Sarah, what I'll, I'll do that now so I can make the motion. I make the motion uh, to deny the project based on our public comment and our board member comments so that we can send the, the request to deny to our general board meeting tomorrow. Do I have a second? Richard seconds. Okay, so we're gonna do a roll call vote. No more public comments, no more board member comments. All right, Secretary Sanchez. So yeah, a motion uh, to vote yes means to deny, correct? Yeah. All right. That's cool. So motion is to deny this project. Voting yes is to deny and voting no would be to approve. Sarah? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Benny? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Richard? Simone. <laughs> and Fernanda, yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. So that recommendation will be sent to tomorrow's general board meeting. Uh, we want to thank all the presenters today and the community for coming out. Okay. Um, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Brian and Jesse. Please reach out to us. All right. All right. Um, okay. So where's my agenda? So we're going to move on. To yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Item number four, future agenda items. Ah, future agenda items. Does any board members have any future agenda items that on, off the top of their heads? Uh, I have one. When I attend the, the 100 acre partnership because it's land use, I think we need to request, um, they have a community advisory board that's dealing with um, the Pacel del Rio project, which mm -hmm. is from us. But it affects us. Mm -hmm. We're already working like on Avenue 34 and the contaminated sites. The underground water kind of cross contaminates a lot of that area, including in the, our area. So I think we, um, I'll help draft the letter to request, um, I forgot the name of the, it's the Legaspi um, research team, outreach, something like that, that's, that got the contract to do the outreach. So I think a letter to them requesting for us to be able to appoint two members to the um, community advisory board is important for us to be able to have a, a voice at the table. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Vince. Any other board members? I have a couple items. Um, so I went by Benny Boy Brewery. The parking's out of control. They pretty much privatized Louisa Street, that little cul-de-sac there, and it's spilling all out onto Daly. Fall out from um, upzoning uh, something's on PF to a bar. Uh, I have another thing. Um, so a new demolition permit has been submitted for 2659 Pasadena Avenue, the house from the 1800s that's been burned down five times that has an abate order that the city, uh, you know, wanted for the past 20 years um and then uh and then there's a new application submitted uh for the welch's property next you know the dry cleaning site welch's industrial dry cleaner abutting the uh avenue 34 site for uh they're doing soil boring boring testings uh today is the last day they're doing soil boring testings it was a dtc notice dtsc notice we have it as a supporting dock so you know now they're trying to they're planning on building on that site too the dry the renowned toxic real toxic site uh and um 
I think, oh, and then a new application has been put in for the Pruitt Street house at Flat Top, you know, the, the house with the pool. That we went, we had the meeting earlier, uh, maybe in November last year, or which we rejected the project with the Zoning Commission. Um, so it's 2824 North Pruitt Street, 2823, 2830, and 28, yeah, 2824 and 2830 North Pruitt Street, a new um, application for uh, single family homes with uh, ADU, one of four. I don't know. And uh, That's it, I guess. <clears throat> Is that right? I have one more. Yeah. Noticed it today up on Avenue 18, mm -hmm. uh, right next to the the uh, the daycare. Uh huh. There's a, there's a house that has a demolition permit on it or a demolition notice. Is it the White House yeah. with the park behind it with Downey Park? We have to find out, listen, I've been trying to, you know, it's like weird. It's like we get notification of uh, new uh, applications, you know, for uh, projects, right? From LADB, uh, LA City Planning, and you can find them on their site beforehand, which is what I do to be one step ahead of the game. Um, but there's no comprehensive alert system for submitted demolition permits. Uh, I think it's like ridiculous. Um, there's like a, there's, only a site on the gist map like the navigate la thing where you can like it's a database but it's only for approved demo permits so we need to find out how we can access like whenever a demo permit submitted it should go directly to the council right they're making it really hard so uh i'm gonna add that avenue 18. we have when you see the blue sign go up for demolition you have 30 days to uh oppose it so it's not much time. I'll get a permit and send it out. Okay, cool. Uh, demo. Sweet. Any board, any uh, community member requests for planning and land use committee? We have a few hands up. We have Elisa. Elisa, I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you so much. I do have a quick question. Thank you for saying that. A blue sign, when there is action for demolition, a blue sign needs to go up for 30 days. Um, one of the investors reps, I had a conversation with him yesterday because um, we're starting to, in and around the, the Keith, Barbie, Lincoln Park Avenue and Mission Road, um, we're starting to see a lot of um, squatting and gang activity happen. And so I mentioned that to him because the squatting is happening on the 2018 Keith Street home, which is boarded up and they own. Um, and he mentioned to me that they were going to demo it. And he said in a few weeks. And when I asked him to be specific, like, is that two, three, four, five weeks? Like, what does that even mean? He said that it would be in about two to three weeks. So if that's true, yeah, I know, right? So if that's true. Protocol. Uh, so maybe they they're paying city the city. I don't know, but that's not. Right. Important. Yeah, that's what I assume too. Because prior the previous investors who owned that property did actually post up a blue sign. They did do it thirty days prior, oh. and when these new investors purchased, they removed it and said that they weren't going to be demoing at all. Now I'm being told that they are going to demo the location but that the reason why they don't have to put up a blue sign is because they're using the same contracting company to do the demo so again i think it uh, just i think for anyone that doesn't have any experience with land use or any just advocacy of any sort you take their word for what they say and i think the most frustrating thing is if you don't come to meetings like this you you don't become your you don't become informed yourself right so even just for me Sarah, you saying like they need to post something up in the next 30 days. It's like, yeah, that's what I thought. So I just got confirmation. And so now it's like, if, if demo is really going to happen, then where's the sign? Yeah, no, thank this you. Is a, a rash of demos, a rash of demos uh, adjacent to the uh, USC biotech corridor off the main that's been upzoned. Um, yeah. And there's a uh, limited, what, yeah, it's like limited notification. It's like a blue sign's put up for 30 days and then it dissolves in the rain, right? And you have 
limited recourse to fight a demo. You could try to get it, his, you know, historic designation, or to sue the city or something. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, if anybody wants to like, if you if you see a property and you're suspicious if there's a demo permit, yeah, go to uh, ladbs.com or whatever, and then go to uh, permits permit check or permit search and then enter the address and then you can see if there's anything pending on it. Yeah, I did that last night and there was nothing. But so also you have to be careful because it's best to use Navigate LA and you enter the address and you can see sometimes they, if it's a multi, multi parcel property, they'll submit the demo permit on another adjacent parcel. Mm. But then you'll miss it. But I'm going to, you know, maybe another item would be to, to the city, de, you know, demanding like uh, direct wire, like um, being in the, uh, you know, they have to send us, that should be mandatory that they send all the councils a list of uh, submitted demo applications. That's so, a really good point though that you just said, because I think the property is a multi, it's considered a multi-unit because it has a garage that's on the Barbie side, but the home is actually located on the Keith Street side. So technically that garage was grandfathered in, but according to assessors, it, I believe, I believe, I could be mistaken, but I believe it says it, that it's a multi-unit. So, okay, I'll, I'll do some digging as well. Yeah, okay, cool. Keep us in the loop. Um, all right, any other uh, community uh, ideas for uh, new uh, Planning and Land Use Committee items for future agendas? Future Thank agenda you, Lisa. Meeting? We have <laughs> Jab Sprog. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just really quick, uh, um, I'm a, I am a member of the uh, Steering Committee, uh, Alliance of River Community Steering Committee, and I would like uh, for the Lincoln Heights neighborhood, neighborhood Council to appoint at least one or two members to um, uh, to attend the, the the Alliance of River Community ARC meetings as, a, oh. as, as an appointee. We have Vince and we had. Uh, oh, you do. We had uh, Diego, but I don't know if Diego's been going. So we could appoint a new a, a second. Ben, should we have a second ARC rep? We could, if somebody wants to step up to it. Because ARC is like, we went at it with like an environmental slant, right? Through the environmental committee, but planning and lining is, there should be somebody from the pluck on it. Yeah, besides Vince, maybe. So, okay. No, just, just as a recommendation. I mean, uh, I know it's not the right um, uh, time, but uh, you know, you can, you can discuss it, uh, that will be nice. And your next meetings on September 6th, correct? Yes, we would love for you guys to attend the meetings and bring uh, your concerns and everything. Yeah, and the public too, ARC. Yes. Alliance for River Communities. Thank you. All right, cool. Thank you, Jabs. And I, I just want to mention again, so tomorrow's our, our general board meeting and all of the items, the action action items today are going to be uh, referred to that board, that meeting in which it will be voted on by the entire council. and. And then, yeah, so uh, I hope everybody comes. Um, any other public uh, new items or comments? Raise your hand. We have one more GOAT developer. And yes, it's a hook. I raised my hook. <laughs> yes, and I think that every month now you should have a little tiny update on United States of America versus Jose Luis Wazar <laughs> to keep everybody frothing at the mouth. February 2023 is the trial date, but we have good news. We're gonna get an earlier show. USC's favorite son, your favorite school graduated a man and taught him the ways of life. Mark Ridley Thomas, the stellar example of a USC education will be going on trial in November. Yes, and that's what your committee needs to do is keep updating the community. What's happening? Will there be a plea bargain? Other defendants? How do projects get built in this city? Yes, the FBI is giving you the roadmap 
And that's why Eunices Hernandez, our new councilwoman from CD1, needs to become our protector, protecting all of us from all of Gil's friends. Because once Gil leaves, the hordes are going to come in and attack. But I'm confident my protector, my guardian angel, Eunices Hernandez, will be making things safe for Goat Puppet and CD1. <laughs> You really think so? Yes. Don't you? Yes, I see the confidence in your faces, as I do. <laughs> and then here I have my gavel. I will make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Go Puppet. I have one more mention. One more thing. I just want to share my screen real quick. Uh, so Jimmy Gomez. So with Avenue 34, right, uh, they had to follow all these DTSC rules for the soil which they were skirting, putting dirt all down the road, uh, violating the, the, the rules, right, with the toxic soil. And so uh, nobody's getting back, you know, city has gone. Uh, so uh, Jimmy Gomez wrote a letter <clears throat> and a special press release about Avenue 34 um, to get action for EPA oversight on what's going on. And uh, yeah, there's just so many tangled webs. So. Maybe we'll have that on a, on a future meeting. Um, when you have to jump over the city to the federal level to get action, which they prohibit our council from doing. We're basically say we're a city agency, so we're only allowed to talk to the highest we could go is Mayor Garcetti or something. So, um, but when it comes to health, safety, and welfare, it's like you know we have you know we have to just keep trying to get some get through to somebody right and uh yeah so check out our supporting docs we have a historical cultural monument nomination form on there how to do it and all the stuff about the uh, the lincoln park mission road project all right so i'm gonna move on to the next item oh we have one hand up is that Oh, Lisa. Okay, so let's go for this. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to Vince. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. There are seconds. Second. Fernando seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Abstentions, none. Thank you, public. Thank you, committee members. We'll see you all tomorrow in our final decisions. 6 p.m. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.